Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today you join me in the 2023 Kia Niro EV. Now this is a small family SUV that's designed to kind of bridge the gap between some of the larger ones and some of the smaller hatches. And I think the size does that really well. We're going to be talking a little bit about the actual spec options first, including the drivetrain and the different models before I actually hit the review. So there's three different options to choose from when it comes to drivetrain. The first being the normal self-charging hybrid, which is a 1.6 turbo, comes highly recommended by myself. It's an excellent hybrid solution. It's got enough power off the line and it normally returns about 65 miles per gallon. Um, and yeah, you don't have to worry about charging it at all, which is really, really nice. You've then got a plug-in hybrid option, which of course the mileage may vary, but that one uh, has a little bit more power and the option to run in all electric mode. And then you've got this one, which is the EV. Then trim levels, it starts with the two, which comes with a smaller eight inch touchscreen and this 10.25 inch cluster that I've got in front of me here, which is really nice. It comes with a cloth interior, collision assistance, and a lot of the radar cruise features and all that kind of thing and a few of those other self-driving features. Step up to the three and you then get some vegan leather upholstery on the seats. You get heated seats and steering wheel and you then get a 10.25 inch touchscreen on the left hand side as well. Or the four model, which is what I have here, which is the fully loaded one with the power tailgate, the sunroof, remote parking feature on the key and a head up display. All of the hybrid and plug-in hybrid options come with a dual clutch transmission, which is actually really nice. The one I had in this small charge was a six speed single clutch and the dual clutch definitely makes a nice difference. And also the hybrid starts from around 27,000 pound for the base model and ranges up to about 33 for the top end four. That one does naught to 60 in around 10.4 seconds. So it's not the quickest in the world. This EV does naught to 60 in 7.8. So it's quite sprightly with 201 horsepower but starts from a little bit more money. So it starts from 37,000 pound for the two all the way up to 43,000 for this four model, which is the one that I'm driving today. So which model is right for you? Well, that depends on obviously the equipment that you want. But aside from that, the drivetrain is really down to your living situation, I would say. A plug-in hybrid is only good if you've got somewhere to charge it all the time. An electric vehicle is only good if you do relatively short journeys. You don't have to worry about that long range anxiety. And the the self-charging hybrid, that'll be the one that's pretty much for everyone and that can get you by no matter what the situation. So that's the one I normally recommend because the electric infrastructure just isn't quite there in this country yet. I've literally just come from Starbucks and I tried to put the car on charge and the charge wasn't working. And you see that a lot, unfortunately. But it is what it is, right? This does support fast charge. So let's talk specifics of the EV then. All the models have a 64.8 kilowatt hour battery, 201 horsepower, 255 newton meters of torque, which is actually slightly less than the uh, self-charging hybrid model. But the fast charging feature is nice. You can do a, on a 100 kilowatt charger, you can charge the car in 45 minutes. Um, and if you've got a slightly lesser charge, like a 50 kilowatt, it takes about an hour and 15. Um, of course, it does support the really slow charge as well uh, and the wall charge at home. Um, but it's nice to know that it does support those fast charging capabilities. The combined range is 285 miles. And I found that to be pretty accurate, to be honest, with mixed driving, probably around sort of 260, 270, something like that. And that's not bad for an electric car of this size, really. But at the end of the day, you do still get that range anxiety if you're going on a longer journey. So it's more ideal for round town situations. But overall, there's something really nice and calming about driving an electric car. This particular one is really nice off the line. It's obviously really quiet, which is really calming. So let's set aside the drivetrain stuff then and talk about the actual car itself. What's it like? What's it like to live with? Well, as with all Kias, I think the quality of life stuff is absolutely brilliant. So what you'll find is there's lots of weird little quirks and features that you wouldn't have thought of that make things really easy. Stuff like all the plug-in points in here have 180 watts of power delivery, which is awesome for if you're charging a laptop or something like that. Also, it means that you've got a plug socket that you can use when you're charging the car. You can charge things or use things that are, you know, essential household items. Turning circle is absolutely brilliant for a car this size. Love it. Just get around any little mini roundabout with ease. So your day-to-day -day living stuff like the actual space in here, it feels like a bigger car than it is, to be honest. When you look at it from the outside, it is definitely bigger than a hatch, for example, but it, it still feels like it is slightly bigger of an SUV when you're actually sitting in here. I feel like it's quite a raised driving position. I can get a really nice position in this seat as well. This has got obviously the, the optional sort of comfort seats and they're really nice. And the vegan leather actually feels pretty much like real leather. I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find the difference. Um, 
it doesn't have that leather smell to it but obviously it's great that Daisy wasn't killed in the process so that's wonderful and at the end of the day a lot of manufacturers are going towards these more sustainable materials which I'm all for when you get in the car you're greeted by the seat sliding backwards electrically so that you can get in and out nice and easy you can then select a driver profile so if you've got more than one person using the car it changes automatically to their settings including all the radio stuff which is great uh, you've then got all of the things on the dash like for example when you turn your lights on and off it shows you on the dashboard what's going on which is lovely you've got a shortcut button on the steering wheel as well as on the dash over here so if you want to assign a specific function to those you can and then you've got things like quiet mode where if you've got kids asleep in the back it limits the rear speakers and puts most of the sound through the front it's all genius it's little things like that that really really work when you go up to a tunnel it puts the automatic recirc on on the climate control so that you don't get gassed out by the fumes and when you come near a school or a hospital it automatically puts it into all electric mode if you're in a hybrid car so that you reduce your emissions it's genius and i love things like that it's really nerdy and really simple but it's just little things like that that some of these other manufacturers really don't think about as for your interior it is your normal kia affair in that in the last 10 years kias have really gone up market everything feels quite nice it's definitely not premium it's not like sitting in my audi things don't feel as nice to touch as that but the vegan leather is really nice even on this steering wheel here which is lovely and all of the buttons are kind of where you'd expect them to be you get kia's new kind of uh, climate control system where you can toggle between the climate and the radio and nav controls which is a nice little gimmick and even though there are some touchscreen functions on there there are two physical dials which work which are quite good and of course you've got steering wheel controls as well your self-driving features are, are nice too so you've got your autonomous steering on the highway with one button just to turn that on or off which is really nice it will steer and keep you in lane and also you've got your kind of your blind spot assist so if you go to overtake and something's in your blind spot uh, the car will kind of beep and warn you it will give you haptic feedback through the wheel and it will steer you back into lane if it thinks you're going to hit something so that's really nice there's loads of safety stuff like that uh, and it will also beep at you if you stray over the white lines um, also when there's a speed camera coming up it will lower the music and it will beep to let you know it can be frustrating at times it can be intrusive don't get me wrong and you can turn it off if you fiddle about with the touch screen and go through some of the menus but it's not the end of the world it is a really nice system and I think Kia and Hyundai do it really well I think it's one of the best in the game when it comes to the out-of-the-box features and kind of ease of use uh, that the only thing is like I said it can be a little bit anxiety inducing sometimes if you're heading towards something and it thinks you're going to crash into it it might kind of get a bit panicked about it and it starts warning you and beeping you and everything starts vibrating and you feel a bit uncomfortable so I have found myself feeling a bit anxious approaching things at times thinking that the systems are going to kick in for me but luckily a lot of it can be disabled infotainment as always in Kia's is wonderful I don't like the graphics that much I've never been much of a fan of the font and the way everything looks but it is nice and responsive not the best in the business but it's good uh, the touchscreen is really nice as well the only complaint I have is in this particular car it's not like the small Taj where it kind of curves towards you it's really flat on the dash and even though it all looks really nice it's quite far away so I find myself having to kind of lean over like this to use them and the downside of that is it's it's kind of a bit distracting when you're driving to be honest there's no like central wheel or anything else that you can control it with of course you do have limited functions on the steering wheel but most of those are to control the screen in front of you rather than the infotainment one on the left so I find that if you're using something like Apple CarPlay or if you want to input something on the maps you're kind of leaning right over doing this and I don't find that the best solution I wish there was something like a bit like in BMW's iDrive where you've also got like a central control like a click wheel that you can use to input stuff rather than just the touchscreen but it does all work nicely and it is really reliable uh, something to be said about these korean cars is always the infotainment just seems to just work a lot of german cars i get in it crashes every five minutes and all that kind of thing which obviously is not ideal i'm going to pop it in sports mode and here we go off the line nice surge of power it's not crazy but it's rapid and there's definitely a much better throttle response in that sport mode you really feel the difference between eco sport and the normal modes um, and of course you do have some control over that with the paddles as well um, but overall it feels good and it doesn't feel too kind of heavy and and like the center of gravity is too low down as well most electric cars they feel a little bit too planted in some ways uh, this one is quite compliant uh, there we go throw it out here cool that picked up there and I'm right up to speed straight away That's, that was really nice and the suspension's compliant it's it's quite soft really and supple for an electric car as I say sometimes they feel a bit too firm uh, this particular car it's a lot softer than the EV6 um, I'd liken it more to like a hybrid Sportage or something like that it's, it's quite nice and there's not too much body roll either but yeah the throttle response it wow yeah the throttle response in sport mode is 
instant in comparison to in the other modes. There's a real difference between the other modes as well. What I do like is you've got some control over the regen braking in this car, which is uh, the same across the Kia EV models with the paddle. So basically, if you press the up paddle, it's faster. So you get less regen braking, it's more free. If you press the down paddle, it goes down through the modes into like an automatic mode and then down to eye pedal mode. Eye pedal mode being your complete one pedal operation. So it'll brake entirely for you. There's that beep kicking in because I strayed over the lines. So if I go right the way down using the paddle, I can go into single pedal driving, which is great sitting in traffic. Or if I want it to feel more free and more responsive, I can press the up paddle, put it to basically zero regen, and then I've got full control and it will just kind of coast without the regen braking kicking in. Um, if I press down, down again, then you get to a situation where I come off the pedal and it starts braking for me. So you can kind of put it wherever you want it and whatever makes you more comfortable. And I find myself using the uh, sort of one pedal driving mode more in traffic, which is really nice. And then you can just free it up when you want to using the paddles. Really nice, really intuitive. It's quite quiet in here as well, to be honest. Like, I definitely think something with a bit more insulation would be nicer. Like this is running on the slightly smaller wheels as well. And I can hear quite a lot of tire noise on this particular surface I'm on. But overall, it's a really serene experience, especially in town, obviously being all electric, this particular model, you don't get any kind of engine roar and stuff and you can just set off really super smoothly. If you've got the, the sound system up, then you don't even really notice much noise from the car at all. Uh, wipers are silent. That's a weird thing to say, I know, but I can't hear the motors, even sitting still in traffic, which is really cool. Uh, and this Harman Kardon sound system in this one, even though it's not the nicest quality I've heard, it really does have some thump to it in terms of the bass. So when you crank that a bit, you don't notice much of the outside world anyway. Practicality is pretty good. Like I said, it does feel quite high up, but it's not too raised like a proper 4x4 SUV. You do have quite a good bit of space back there. So I'm six foot. You can see I've got some space in the front here and it's pretty much the same in the back. The body line is quite boxy and flat at the top. So in terms of the roof, it's pretty much the same back there that it is here. In fact, you might even have a little bit more space back there because of the sunroof. Um, but yeah, it's quite spacious. You can fit three adults side by side um, for relatively long journeys as well because it's quite a wide car, even though the middle seat is kind of firm. But there's Isofix points, although they're not the nice ones with the flip out covers like you see on some of the other Kia models. They are kind of between the seats, but they are mounted quite close to the surface. So you can fit a baby seat pretty flat, which is really cool. And uh, back there, you've also got a charging point in the floor, a completely flat floor pan being an EV. So you've got space for your feet and the charging points for your phones are built into the seats, which I think is really awesome because you don't have to have your cables dangling about on the floor. It's something I've seen in quite a few Kias now and it's really useful. It's just really well thought out. One thing about this vegan leather though is it's very kind of slippery. I don't, it doesn't bother me sitting here in the driver's seat, but if I put anything on the back seat, like a bag or something, I had my bag, my backpack up, uh, back there earlier, and it was literally just sliding backwards and forwards. It's a bit odd, uh, so I put it on the floor in the end. Boot space is all right as well. In the EV, it's actually biggest because in the hybrid model, you have the uh, battery pack under the rear seat, so you don't get the same sort of flat loading bay. There is a slight lip when you're loading, but it's really not that bad at all. I've seen far worse. And there is some underfloor storage as well for stuff like your cables and all that, even though there is a little bit of space up front for your cables as well, because this is the electric model. But the only caveat to that is the charging port on this electric one is at the front, right? Looks pretty cool. I understand that you can just drive into a space. I see the convenience of that. But there's two problems with that. So A for me, I like reversing into a space, right? So for me, that's pretty annoying having to drive straight in. Um, the other thing, what if you crash it? What if I have a little front impact in this? I go into the back of someone at a set of lights and that's it, your charging port's knackered. So what then? I, I can't charge the thing, can't get to work, lose my job, lose the house, everything goes down the pan. All right, well, that's a bit dramatic, but you get where I'm coming from. It might write the car off in a few years, just having a small front impact because it messes up the charging pole. What are you going to do then? So I get it, but I also kind of don't. It seems convenient, but when you actually go to use it, you think, well, this could have just been on the side of the car, like a normal petrol filler cap. And if I have a prang in it, it wouldn't actually matter. So yeah, I, I'm not too sure I'm keen on that. So what about the design then? Well, I think it's kind of growing on me. I really like the LED lights at the front and the rear, even though it looks a little bit Volvo from the rear, but that's fine. 
Um, in terms of the kind of interior, I really like all the angles. I love the material that they've used on the dash, which it just looks really nice and premium. Everything kind of feels pretty nice as well in here. There's some scratchy plastics down the bottom, but that's kind of forgivable. Um, and the, the kind of layout is nice. As I say, the only complaint I have is that the screen's a bit far away. It's not angled towards me, but it's a small price to pay, really. And I've never been too much of a fan of the sort of two-pronged steering wheel, but it is fine the only complaint i have about that is that if you angle it too low it kind of blocks the screen in front of you a little bit but it's not the end of the world yeah in here it just it just looks quite nice and you get a little bit of ambient lighting as well on the left hand side at night and in the door uh, handles here which is cool i do think it looks better on the slightly larger 18 inch wheels which are available on the the self-charging hybrid model and also i'm not sure i'd spec this two-tone paint either i really like the dark metallic gray it's got a really nice flake to it but i'm just not too sure about the side blades they look a little bit Audi R8 but not and I'm just not convinced about them I don't think it looks quite right but there are some kind of vents there which are actually functional which look quite nice I just don't think I'd spec it with the paint the way it is but overall I think it does look quite charming and like I say it it kind of is a bigger car than it looks it's kind of designed I think to look more like a hatch than an SUV and I think it pulls that off really well I do like the angles at the front as well the kind of the curved front edge just looks really nice so what's it like when you press on then when I'm going to put it in sport mode and this is the roundabout I've done in quite a few of my reviews now and I'm going to take this with some pace and see what happens I'm not going to press it too hard but it does handle quite nicely and like I say it doesn't roll around too much either which is nice let's floor it We here we go got a bit of traction control kicking in there and we're up to speed already it really does fly this thing like you don't notice it too much uh, when you're kind of up to speed it's, it's de definitely better at the lower end but 201 horsepower is, is quite brisk it's, it's not going to blow your head away like a Tesla or something like that but it's really nice coming from like your average family car it's going to be plenty quick enough for most people uh, and as I say the handling is quite impressive as well you, you don't really get any texture through the wheel being all electric steering and so on but especially with all the assistance stuff built in but it does pick up nicely when you want it to when you stab the throttle makes a cool little electric whine as well um, and yeah, it, it's quick enough. It, it, you don't need any more than this in your family car, basically. The thing I'm honestly most impressed with is the suspension in this, and also the braking, really. In most electric cars, you kind of get that squishy regen braking feeling. In this, it is quite progressive. It feels quite normal, not like quite as much as a, a traditional petrol car, but it's a lot better than some of the other EVs that I've driven, put it that way. And as I say, in comparison to something like an EV6, which is built specifically as an electric platform, this feels like the suspension is a lot more like a normal car and it's got that kind of uh, more soft and squishy side to it. You don't always feel like you're being sucked to the floor because of the low centre of gravity of the batteries. It feels much more balanced. So what's my overall thoughts then? Well, to be honest, I really like it. I, I don't think it's something that I'd buy with my own money just because of the fact that at this price point, there's so many alternatives. It's a bit of a weird segment though. It's not kind of big enough to be a full SUV and it's not small enough to be like a hatch, like a Puma or a Mocha. So it's in its sort of own little class. But I do think it's ideal for someone who doesn't want something as big as a Sportage. Personally, I prefer the Sportage in terms of its design, its interior, the way it's kind of curved round. I prefer the kind of more bold exterior. But this has grown on me, and I do think it's going to be an ideal car for a lot of people. I think Kias have come such a long way, and I'm always praising their, their range. And yeah, for most people, this is all the car that you'll need in a family car. It's just big enough uh, for your sort of your kids in the back and that kind of thing to get a few bits in the boot. But it's not too big if you're not really comfortable driving like an SUV size car. So it's a nice kind of alternative. But when you consider this one as spec is like 40 grand, that's quite a bit of money to be spending on something like this. So I, I'm just not sure. I think another thing you've really got to consider as well is the industry leading warranty. You know, Hyundai, Kia and Toyota pretty much have the best warranties in the business. Uh, this one, seven years, 100,000 miles. You, you can't go wrong with that. Like, there's, there's so much that can go wrong on these cars, being all electric now and all these gadgets and gizmos. In general, I think these are exceptionally reliable. But at the end of the day, things go wrong. And that's a really reassuring warranty to have, especially in an electric car where you've got things like batteries to degrade and all that kind of thing. I'm gonna do a little three point turn here as well. And this is a tight road, this. Rotary dial's nice and easy. I've got a reversing camera, so that kind of tells me where I need to be. And look at this, I'm not gonna quite make it round because of this transit that's parked here. Mm. 
that was cool. That moped that just went past, when I put it in reverse, the steering wheel vibrated and it flashed on the head-up display to alert me that there was something in the way. I like that. I always, as a petrol head, I always miss the kind of the drama of an engine and the sound and all that kind of thing. But there's something to be said about just instant torque and power and just that smooth power delivery. It's so nice and relaxing. But having said that, if I was to actually put my own money on one of these, because of where we are with electric in the UK at the moment, I'd be quite comfortable with a self-charging hybrid model. I really like the self-charging hybrids that Kia do. I think they're just right. 65 mile per gallon all day long and they have that kind of electric feel off the line, but then the engine kicks in nice and smooth, dual clutch transmission, and all of this kind of tech and gadgetry that you've got in all the higher end models as well. Plus they're a little bit cheaper than the EVs. So I think personally, that's where my money would be. For most people who are just after a family hatch or a small SUV, something like this is really ideal because it's got all of those quality of life features that are really useful. Um, and my complaints about it have been really nitpicky, to be honest with you. And I really particularly like the way this one drives as an EV. So if you're looking for an EV, I think I prefer the way this feels over something like an EV6. So if you are looking for a new Kia Nero, whether it be the EV or whether it be the hybrid, check out my Lease Loco affiliate link in the description below where you can see all the lease deals on this car. And thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Kia as always for sending out the car. I've got another Kia review coming next week actually and some stuff that I'm doing with the TT as well. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.